video, we want to consider how to solve um, first order, first degree, and it's also of ordinary dimensional equation. So we are going to focus on the method of separation of variables. So I will show you some functions that we can separate the function fx comma y, and some functions that we cannot separate it fx comma y. So from there, you can now see how we can use this method to solve first order, first degree, ordinary differential equation. In the year 1691, Leibniz was actually trying to solve a particular first order, first degree, ordinary differential equation, and he discovered that the most important thing about this problem is the nature of fx, y that, in fact, it's possible for us to break the function down into a product functions and if we can do that then it will be very easy for us to solve the problem and then um, uh, after that i think three years after uh, john bernoulli was able to explain this method very well that is why at times in science whatever you discuss is better for us to explain it better but now we give the credit to john bernoulli uh, that was in, in 1694 what he's trying to say is that uh, if you have a function fs comma y and the most important thing is that um, we should break the function down into component of x of x, then y of y. If we can do that one, it will be very easy for us to solve the problem. Let's consider example one. We have dy ds is equal to exponential x plus y. What does it mean? It means that um, we can uh, we need to focus on the function f x comma y, which we can see on the screen. Then. What is the next thing now is that then we can break it down to give us exponential of x multiplied by exponential of y and that is what we can see on the screen. Now let's consider another example. If you see something like this, where the ideas is equal to x squared into bracket y squared plus y raised to power 3. Can we easily separate this variable? Yes. You can see now that y squared plus y3, they are already together and we have x squared already together. So this one is even simple. All you need to do now is to divide both sides by y squared plus y 3 by raised to power 3 and when we do that one then you can also multiply both sides by dx then you can answer now that in this case we've been able to separate the variable because we have everything that has to do with y one side everything that has to do with x the other side the next thing we are going to consider now is this we are going to consider two cases where separation is not possible now let's consider example three. Now we have dy dx is because exponential of x comma y x y. In this case, we notice that term um, is not possible for us to easily separate the function f x comma y. You know, we are talking about is it possible for us to have exponential of x y in terms of x of x y of y? It's not possible. Even if we write the uh, expansion of exponential x y, we can see the complexity of this problem there. So in this case, we cannot use the method to solve a problem like this. Let's consider another example. Now here we have dy dx is equal to x plus y. In this case, our f s comma y is x plus y. Then the question is, is can we easily separate the variables? No. It's not possible so in that case we cannot use the method of separation of variable to solve a problem like this you cannot see now let's consider this problem now you can see in this case now that we can easily separate the variable here because here our f x comma y is the same thing as exponential of x multiplied by exponential of minus y so what does it mean it means that we are having the problem the y dx is equal to e x multiply by exponential minus y so can we separate the variable now yes so we now have dy over exponential minus y then is equals to ex multiplied by dx what am i trying to do is just to uh, divide both sides by this then you multiply both sides by dx so looking at this now what's the next thing don't forget that this one is still the same thing as um, exponential of plus y then dy is equal to exponential of x dx so let us integrate both sides if you integrate exponential y what will you have you still having exponential y because if you differentiate the power of y by one if you differentiate y you have one then you divide it by one isn't it then is equals if you integrate this one too this one will still give you exponential of x over one then plus constant of integration so what is the next thing is that we find the link of both sides so we are now having lean exponential y is equals to lean 
exponential of x plus c. So this one here will give me y then is equals to ln of e x plus c. So that is the solution we are looking for. So let's consider this example again. Looking at this example, you will notice that we can easily separate the variables. How can we do that? You know, in this case, we are having um, we are having the y, then we are having y plus one multiplied by dy, and is equal to two x then dx. So after this, what is the next thing? We need to integrate both sides. If you integrate this one here to give us y squared over two. Then if you integrate 1, you have what? You have y. Then it's equal. So if you integrate 2x, you have 2x. Then 2 over 2. Then plus constant of integration. This one will cancel this. Then which means that from here, we can see clearly now that then we've been able to solve the problem is equal to x squared plus c. And that is the problem solution we are looking for. So, there's another example again now. How do we solve this one? The first thing is for us to separate the variables. So how do we go about it now? We are going to have um, dy over 1 plus y because we are dividing both sides by this. Then this will give us 1 plus x then multiply by the hex. So looking at this, what's the next thing now is for us to integrate both sides. Now look at this now. If you can differentiate the denominator and you have the numerator, you know, if you differentiate 1 plus y, what we get is what? Is 1, isn't it? Then which is 1 that is a. So in this case, how do we do that? We say this one is ln of what? Ln of the denominator. So is equals to, then how do we integrate this one? If you integrate 1, you have what? You have x. If you integrate x, you have what? x squared over 2. Then what is the next one? Plus constant of integration. So the next thing we're going to consider now is that... Um, we can say this is the solution, but if we are not comfortable with this, we can find the exponential of both sides. Then that will give us exponential of ln, then 1 plus y, then is equals to exponential of x plus um, x squared over 2, then plus c. So this one can give us 1, then plus y, then is equals to, we can say our a, then exponential x plus x squared over 2. Do you know one thing here? My a is same thing as exponential c. So that is how to go about it. Now, in this case, now we have another problem to solve. Then the question is, is can we easily separate the variables here? Yes, we can. You will notice that in this case, we don't really have it in terms of fx comma. But do you notice something? Let me show you something now. Now, do you notice that this problem here is still the same thing as what we are having here? So what? The next thing we need to do now is to consider the fact that um, since we can see now that in this case this is our fx comma y this here is what we call our fx comma y so what we are going to do now is that um, we are going to focus on the problem now and separate the variable perfectly because in this case we can see that we are having the y uh, the y divided by one plus y squared are we together? What I'm trying to do is that I will divide both sides of this by 1 plus y squared, isn't it? Okay, then at the same time, this is still the same thing as then plus dx divided by 1 plus x squared, then is equals to 0. It's very simple. This is what I'm saying now. Step number one divide both sides by 1 plus x squared. If you divide both sides by 1 plus x squared, this one will go. Divide both sides again by 1 plus y squared. This one we go. I get it now. They now have div x over this. So that is what we are having. So the next thing now is for us to integrate both sides. So if you integrate both sides, you have something like this. But don't forget, if you want to integrate something like this, this one is we give us a uh, tan inverse of y. Why this one here we give us tan inverse of x? And look at it, if you integrate 0, what we have, you have a constant because it's only a constant that we can differentiate that will give us 0. So likewise, if you integrate uh, 0, you have a constant. So what is next thing now is that uh, we need to find the value of C. How do you find the value of C? We are going to use the condition. The condition y of 0 is equals to minus 1. So what is it? Don't forget that this here, this expression is still the same thing as x0 is what is 0. Y, y0 is what is minus 1. So we substitute, we now have tan inverse of 
minus 1 then plus tan inverse of 0 then is equals to constant c and tan inverse of minus 1 here we give me minus pi over 4 and then what about tan inverse of 0 this one will give me 0 then is equals to c so which means that i'm able to find my sinner so what is the next thing now the next thing is to come back to the problem you can answer that the final solution is tan inverse of y plus tan inverse of x is equals to uh, minus pi over 4. So in this case, that is the solution we are talking about. So if you don't like this in this form, you can find the tan of both sides. Then you can see now that this is the solution we are talking about.